Well, good afternoon and welcome to Daily Bread. We're excited this week to continue Pastor Jeff's series on the storehouse. Some of the best teaching that I've heard from him, and I've been listening to his teaching for 23 years. We have received tremendous testimonies from people all over the world who have applied these principles and are seeing God move in their lives, in their finances, in their, in their church bodies, in their homes. So I encourage you to like and share, start a watch party, call your friends, call your grandma. This is good stuff, and it's worth listening to. So God bless you today. All week we'll be hearing about the storehouse. So we'll start today and carry on through the rest of the week. God bless you. Let's open our hearts and just have the Lord minister the word to us. And I'm continuing along the line of finances and some of the things that the Lord is uh, teaching us and showing us for this hour. We have a lot of battlefronts at one time taking place in this hour in the spirit realm. And so let's prepare in word for battles that are at hand. All right? Let's pray together. Thank you, Lord, for today and the privilege and opportunity that we can be here to study the Word, learn the Word, and grow together. And we ask your Holy Spirit to lead us, guide us, and direct us, and be our teacher. I pray my words are yours and yours are mine in Jesus' name. And we all said, Amen. Okay, now I want to encourage you as you and I, as we are learning new things, or maybe hearing things we've heard before, but as we look at our lives and realize, hmm, part of my life lines up with the Word. Part of it doesn't. Okay, let's, let's be teachable and make changes. But no condemnation, no guilt, no shame. And when it comes to making financial decisions and uh, changing, let's not rush into something and do something foolish. So I give you some basic guidelines. Let's follow this, follow those. Let's look at our own individual overall picture and begin to make a plan, slow and steady. And I'll try to reiterate that more later. I talked to a man from another nation. Uh, He's older than I am, maybe a decade. And he, Pastor, maybe I made a mistake. I leased a car. I said, well, um, that's not generally what we encourage people to do, but sometimes a lease is better. We reviewed his circumstances, and I said, listen, in light of your situation, a lease is a good thing. You don't have a debt. You don't have to maintain it. You're way below, uh, not, you're well below your total miles, which is usually where a lease will get you in trouble. So just finish your lease, and then let's look at options that you might have in the future. To break the lease is to lose money, and it's to do more damage. So just go ahead and walk it out. Oh, he was so thankful when we prayed together. He said, Pastor, I don't want to make a mistake. I said, don't worry about making mistakes. We do the best we can to obey the the word and follow the leading of the Lord. And God is merciful and gracious, and he knows your heart. Amen? So let's learn. Let's grow slowly. And I don't want you to do something rash and cause yourself long-term challenges and problems. All right? Uh, We'll go into more details with that later. Now, the topic for today and what I've been on and will be on for a while is building a storehouse. So while we're uh, minimizing debt, while we are learning to manage our money differently, and so we'll get rid of consumer debt first, owing money on something that's already been consumed. Let's pay that off. Uh, We're going to eventually erase Uh, debt on items that depreciate that tend to lose their value. And we're going to ultimately even eliminate debt on things that appreciate, generally speaking, in value, like a home. Debt is not a sin, but it's not God's best. So we're going to apply faith. At the same time, we're going to build a storehouse. Now say it with me. I'm building a storehouse. We have different kinds of storehouses, but we need a cash storehouse. All right. Deuteronomy 28 And I encourage you to read verses 1 through 14. As you obey the Word of God, God's going to bless you. And verse 8 says, The Lord shall command the blessing, His blessing, upon your storehouses. So if you have a storehouse, God will command a blessing on it. So you may be thinking, well, I don't even want to talk about saving money right now. I'm unemployed. I don't want to talk about having a storehouse savings because I have bills to pay. Well, 
You have bills to pay. Pay your bills. You're going to eliminate debt. Go ahead and do that. Slow and steady and chip away at it. But at the same time, open up a savings account. Now, one lady sent me a picture, and the Lord had been uh, ministering her about a storehouse. So remember, we ask the Lord for seed for a storehouse. And she showed me uh, bags of, uh, like uh, sandwich bags of money, uh, a lot of money, and dollar bills and $5 bills and $20, stuff she found in the grass or yard or pavement. So it's there for the taking. It's yours. And so uh, God has a way of providing, right? God has a way of providing. He's a miracle-working God. I, uh, when I had gotten married, I was young. We were 18, and I wanted to get my wife a gift. But finances were relatively tight. I wanted to buy her a new Bible, a nice leather Bible. If, and it was expensive. What I wanted to get her was around $100. So I was praying. And uh, I was plowing in a field. <clears throat> and as I was plowing in a field in late fall, and as I looked behind me, $100, uh, $20 bills began to just pop up out of the ground. So I stopped and walked back there, and there were like five new $20 bills just floating there in the air, crisp, like brand new. So I looked around for wallet, purse, nothing. There were no jars or anything. Somehow, some way, it must have been buried in the earth. Who knows? But I just like to call that supernatural provision. Uh, it's never happened since, but I'm praying and asking the Lord. I was able to take those new $20 bills and go get my wife a Bible that she still has to this day and uses quite frequently. So um, don't, don't limit God and say, well, I can't start a storehouse. Yes, you can. And you might be surprised the things the Lord would show you to put a seed in your hand to start that. And then he'll just keep adding to that storehouse. He'll bless it because that's the word of the Lord. Okay? Now, a reminder, a few things I said last time, and that is that Every day, so today's a new day. We get up this morning after we began our day in rest, and we start a new day. So today, I'm reaping from what I've sown in the past. But also today, I'm sowing into the future. So if I spend all today, I will miss opportunities. I'll call them golden opportunities, God opportunities that are going to come up in the future. So let's uh, prepare and start a um, storehouse. My father and I, one day in the past, we went to like a, oh, I think you'd call it sort of like a flea market at a fairgrounds. And we were walking through there and I saw a really nice Dutch oven with legs and a rim on the lid for that Dutch oven so you could cook uh, with coals outdoors. Very nice. It had a price tag of $10 on it. So I uh, told the lady there, I would like to buy this. Is you want $10? Yes. She said, I'll take $10. But let me just tell you that that was a golden opportunity. It's worth way more than $10. It was a very popular brand. Actually, the kind my mother prefers more than any others, and they're expensive. That particular Dutch oven would be well over $100. So I cleaned it up and gave it away as a gift. Now, <clears throat> we have all kind of opportunities coming up before us. So let's put money in the storehouse so when those opportunities come, we can capitalize upon them. And if I save today, then I'll be prepared for future opportunities. If I spend everything today, then I'll miss future opportunities and golden opportunities. Proverbs 13, 22, a good man, a good person, leaves an inheritance for their children's children. So uh, my wife and I have some storehouse money. We don't even ever intend to use that. We purpose to leave that to our children. 
and our children's children. What do I have saved and invested for my grandchildren to receive, to inherit? Several things, which I mentioned earlier, uh, hatchets, particular stoves, tents for camping, etc. So I want to teach them how to use it, teach them how to enjoy it, but also uh, money, cash. So storehouses set aside for future opportunities, not just for ourselves, but others. All right. So I have a storehouse set aside for not anymore. My kids are out of college. Money for retirement. Retirement. I'm going to define that. I never intend to retire, but we'll refer to retirement as this. Money set aside to live when I'm no longer am working to provide to pay my bills. So later on, when I don't need to work to have money to provide my bills uh, or tithing and paying what I'm responsible for and creating storehouses, uh, because my whole life I've been creating these storehouses. All right? So liquid savings, a, a, a savings account, that uh, is beyond my investment, or what we'll call retirement, <clears throat> and the things that I'm obtaining, which is wealth, that produce finances to be distributed as Holy Spirit leads. Now, America, listen, it's good to have savings that will run you for six months. So let's try to with our young people, I try to encourage them over time, build up a storehouse of savings that will run you about six months. And as you reach that point, then after that, you'll be able to invest, or maybe slightly before, you'll be able to invest and then build it back up where you have enough to operate for approximately six months, especially a business, especially a business. So USA Today, I read information from USA Today, said that an average, most people need about $23,000 in savings to last six months. So that's a rough draft figure. If I would aim for $22,000, $24,000 in the bank, that's going to run me for more than six months. But on the average, Americans have less than $4,000. In fact, 57% of America have less than $1,000 in their savings. That includes young and old alike. So most of America does not have a storehouse. But God wants us to have a storehouse so He can bless it, so He can add to it. All right. Um, it's time for us to ramp up our savings. I know we're in challenging times. That's one of the best times to ramp up your savings. The, um, the Lord led us to buy this, this property in 2003. So we purchased this in 2003. And we were able to set down 500000 500, I think it was $25,000 cash which was a miracle, and we borrowed approximately $3.5 million. Um, debt is not a sin, but it's not God's best, and we believe God gave us a strategy, and we aggressively attacked that principle. We paid every payment on time ahead of time, but we also, every month, actually every week, we kept paying on the principle. So, so we could say, in essence, every Friday night, we took everything we had, after all the bills were paid, and wrote another check to the bank and paid on the principal and paid on the principal for nine years. And nine years later, this was completely paid for by a church, by the Lord through church, family, local, and extended. Nothing less than a miracle. Now, that means that five years into it, I think it was almost $59,500 a month, Five years into it is 2008 and 2009. So if you go back and look, that was a real recession time, and a lot of people were having a lot of financial problems, especially in some states like Florida, uh, where 
people were losing homes, et cetera. So we went, we actually went through um, an economic decline. I don't know if it was officially called a recession by economists, but I think it was. We, we went right into it like a storm in a ship, right through it, and came out on the other side. And in 2011, we were debt free. So we can't make a decision of what we can and can't do based on circumstances. We make a decision on what we can do by obeying the Word of God. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing a word, Romans 10, 17. So you begin to act on that word with wisdom, with wisdom, and what happens? God begins to do the impossible. All right, so let's ramp up savings. Uh, emergency funds for unexpected like Joseph. Now, I want to get to the life of Joseph a little bit later on. Just make a note of that. And hang on to that. So, ramping up savings, I wrote down three things that are good for us to do. Number one, create a budget. Now, I hope to give you some forms in the near future. I've, I've done that here in the past. <clears throat> uh, if you'll make note of that, I'll try to make one available online. Now, most of what I'm teaching, I've taught to our young adults percentages, uh, uh, renting is good, guidelines for renting. <clears throat> and renting is not a bad thing. Have me make some notes on that in the future. There are advantages to renting. And even a lot of people that are, are wealthy, that steward a lot of wealth, would prefer to rent. It's not a bad idea, and I encourage you to rent, generally speaking, uh, until you know you're going to live somewhere at least seven years. The old saying when I was a kid, um, buy a house, plant an apple tree. When the apple tree produces a bushel basket of apples, you could move. So in other words, there's wisdom in moving into a place, staying there for a while, and then moving on into something different if you want to move into something different. Now, so renting's not bad. Purchasing a place, generally speaking, is a good idea <clears throat> because in the long run, it will be yours if we know we're going to stay somewhere for a while. Okay, creating a budget is good. So I teach the young people, if you're going to get a home, let's do our best to put 20% down, then you pay no PMI, which is a government insurance. It doesn't benefit you at all, maybe $60, $70 a month. It's just out the window, so to speak. So if you put 20% down, that's good. And let's try to operate on 25% of one cup, one spouse's income. If you're having a, raising a children, want to have babies, let's just budget on one income. So both parents don't have to be employed for you to sustain uh, uh, your livelihood. Some of you are thinking, well, that's impossible. And it's not impossible if we manage carefully. So create a budget build up a savings. Creating a budget can help us. Once we create a budget, we realize that, well, maybe I need to downsize a little. Maybe I need to change some things because obviously with my budget, my expenses are more than my income. We'll begin to find out where our money really is going, and we, a budget will help us to find out how can I spend less. And a lot of times, just altering our leisure spending, not eliminating having fun, but eliminating leisure spending will position us to be in a much better place later in life. Number two, ramp up a savings. You may discover after you've created a budget that working a side job might be advantageous. So if you're married, you and your spouse need to agree Okay, um, I'll work a side job for a while, for a season, together agreeing we're going to reach these goals and save. How long uh, we'll do this, how, what goal we're trying to reach, and make sure you're in unity. And once you reach that goal, the time has elapsed, the money's set aside, etc. Revisit that. Don't just keep going because you want to make sure that the two of you are in agreement. Being in agreement is very, very important. 
very. If any two shall agree, Matthew 18, 18 and 19. First Peter chapter 3 related to marriage and agreement and not being divisive because then our prayers are hindered. Number three, ramping up savings. Save when, you ha when extra money comes in, when it comes your way. Don't go blow it. A tax refund, a gift, a bonus from work, etc. Don't just go out and spend it. Uh, invest it and pray that through and know what God would have you to do. These are some, just some key points to ramping up a savings. All right? 80% um, of Americans live, for, 80 plus percent of Americans live from paycheck to paycheck. They can't go without one paycheck. But we're going to create a storehouse so that we can uh, move into a situation where we can go without a paycheck. All right? A storehouse keeps me from having a financial disaster. I could have all kinds of storehouses, but if I don't have a financial storehouse, I could still have some serious challenges. So we want to have a reserve. We want to have money set aside. Okay? Um, U.S. Federal Reserve reports May 27, 2020, for up through 2013. I just, um, and that was for us uh, in USA Today. <clears throat> but I'll give you the numbers. The average credit card debt in 2013 was $5,700. The average credit card debt, revolving credit card debt in 2018 is 9,333 and has more than doubled since seven years ago. So that just keeps increasing. So the enemy is working on us so that we won't have a storehouse. And if we have a budget and ramp up saving some cash for God to bless, that benefits us in the future for future opportunities and positions us to help other people. Okay. Both are important for us at Whitehorse right now. Uh, more on that later. Now, a storehouse is a solid foundation. So let's move past thinking about it. Let's move past talking about it. And let's move into doing something and actually doing it so, let, so that the truth of a storehouse can begin to work for you. Amen? Okay, so far so good, right? Yes. Okay, I think I left some scriptures up on my desk. That's okay, though. Oh, wow. <laughs> Man, time goes fast around here. You no sooner uh, <laughs> get into the Word than... Uh, we're almost done for the day. I really enjoy this. I hope you are too. And I just speak peace to you and ask the Lord to bless you and, and uh, encourage you. You're doing better than you think because as soon as you start to study and think about it, wow, I want to do that. Now, First Chronicles 22 is a wonderful chapter for you and I to read later. Then David said, this is the house of the Lord God. And this is the altar of the burnt offering for Israel. Now, he will teach his son in 1 Chronicles 22, Solomon, the importance of storehouse. And he not only teaches him and tells him, he's doing it. So 1 Chronicles, you can read 22, the whole chapter, especially verse 3 and 4. Uh, where, and David prepared iron in abundance for the nails, for the doors and gates, for the joinings, and brass in abundance without weight, and cedar trees in abundance, and cedar, wood, and much, much more, gold, silver, etc. <clears throat> he actually said that he began it in his poverty. So he began to save in storehouses what he knew he would need later to build. He knew he would not build it. God instructed him that his son would. He was a man of war, but he saw it. 
he saw an assignment for his son. And he began to save for next generation even when he had nothing. And that's probably our biggest battle because we think, well, I, I can't create anything or I'm too old. It's too late. It's never too late. You begin, no matter what your age, and God will bless. God will bless. Amen? First Chronicles uh, 27, verse 25. And I'll just go a few more minutes here today. But here he's talking about David. He has varieties of storehouses all over Israel. And he mentions in 27, 25, some verses before and after, he has storehouses in fields, in cities, in villages, in castles, all throughout Israel. Why? Two reasons are mentioned, one for famine and one for war. Now, I'm going to say that in the spirit realm, we're in a war. I believe at least four fronts. I'll cover that more later, especially on Monday night prayer. So we don't war against flesh and blood, but there's a battle in the spirit realm. And this is a very intense time in the spirit realm that demands prayer. So why do I have a storehouse in time of war, time of poverty? I'm going to start storehouses. Amen. To face famine, to face war, and to prepare for opportunities to buy something of great value. So the day I was with my dad, I had a few dollars with me, 10. And, uh, oh, there's a $100 cast iron uh, crock. Uh, what? Dutch oven, thank you very much. And uh, so I had saved. Doesn't sound like much in a storehouse, but it bought a $100 gift. Remember the testimony I gave, I think it was in a previous Daily Bread, for some reason, and I never have $700 in my pocket. I was in another state with $700 in my pocket. And uh, I bought a rifle and scope, brand new, shot two bullets through it with 18 shells, over $4,000 of product uh, for $700. Gave it to my son as a graduation gift. So let's prepare. Nehemiah had storehouses for wealth and materials so he could go and cast vision, identify with the people that were there, and complete in 52 days what could not be done for decades. He had authority. He had full storehouses. He knew what to ask for. He'd been in prayer, nine prayers in the book of Nehemiah, none of them more than 90 seconds. And those prayers help lead to the walls being established and built. How to ask the king, when to ask the queen, what to ask for, uh, when to ask the king in the presence of the queen, what to ask for, when, where, how. And the Lord filled these storehouses so when it came time to do the job, he had everything he needed. Nehemiah 10, 38. Nehemiah 12, 44. Nehemiah 13. 12 and 13, and you can visit those later, but uh, everything he had need of was there. Amen? Okay, so I've used up my time today, and we're going to have to come to a place of closure, but join us for our next Daily Bread. Listen, invite people to join us. This is life-changing information that will prepare us for now and prepare us for the future for generations to come. Many of these principles I've applied, well, uh, some of them all my life. It's passed on from grandparents and parents because they're biblical principles. They work. And many of them I've learned in my Christian walk. Some I've applied. Many I'm applying right now, more later in testimonies. God's positioning us to bless us, to be a blessing to others. Abraham 12, Genesis chapter 12, verse 3 getting the gospel to the nations, and more. So thank you for being with us today. I so enjoy doing this. I plan on continuing this. Who knows how long. I have no intention of, of quitting or stopping. I'm, I'm going to keep sharing. So as long as I guess a couple of you are out there, I'll keep going. Anyway, Holy Spirit, we ask you to come and seal these words in our heart and help us be storehouse builders in Jesus' name to the glory of God. And everybody said, Amen. All right. God bless you. Thank you. 
We hope you enjoyed this series. For more Daily Bread series and additional teachings, visit our online store at store.whcc.net.